Hello everybody, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Welcome back to another Twinkle Tip Friday video and we are pleased to have you here because we've, well we were gone last week. We were at Trans World Christmas Trade Show. It was a fantastic event. We had a great time. Uh, we met with a number of the hobbyists. We saw thousands of people, at least it felt like thousands. We talked, I lost my voice. And I'm sure some of you are pretty happy about that as well. But uh, in any event, we were gone for the week and we had the chance to uh, share some video of the Trans World Christmas Trade Show event in St. Louis. We go every year. It is a way for us to uh, work with potential uh, clients in the world of holiday lighting and things that they'd like to uh, create and uh, add into their shows for their coming season. So. Um, we're back, and uh, so I have a couple things that I thought about over uh, a few weeks here that I wanted to share with you about some submodeling and just in general models and the way things work in X Lights, and I'm going to share that with you today. So let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The thing I want to share with you folks is, well, there's two things in this video that I'm going to cover, and I'm going to try to do it as, as efficiently as I can without making it too complicated. So uh, you're familiar with our pro layout. Um, there might be a couple surprises in the pro layout you didn't know. And if you didn't know this, you might want to go add it in, but it could be something that breaks your other sequences from other vendors because quite frankly other vendors don't think the way that I do and I don't think the way that some vendors th do so x lights is incredibly incredibly malleable you can do so many things with it this is one of the things that I really really like to throw in on different sequences to get a different feel for whenever I'm applying an effect. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna go open up a brand new sequence in animation and click done. And what we'll do is we'll we'll go through the thing that I have been secretly hiding from everybody for the past, oh, I wanna say six years now. In the pro layout, you're familiar with the pro layout. I've done something with the window frames that are a little bit different than what most other sequence vendors might do or what you might even do on your home in fact many people might consider this counterintuitive but when we go and we're testing models we're, we're looking at models to test and uh, we want to check the sub models uh, we usually use a single strand effect on the sub model to make sure that they're all congruent so we can do this in the sequencer tab and I'm gonna go down to the PPD spiral uh, spiral all here we go or not the spiral all, just the clockwise so here's the model preview so uh, so what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and place a single strand effect and I'm gonna go to the uh, PPD re spiral clockwise and it doesn't matter I'm, we're just testing a sub model here so let me go to default and change this from uh, the render style and change this to per model default and I'm gonna zoom in on just one of these and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it one solid color and I'm going to make the chase size the full length. So as you can see, each one of those legs that are on the spiral on that submodel all articulate the exact same way using single strand per model default. Basically what it's doing, each one of those arms works exactly the same way. They've been grabbed and placed in order so that the effect flows along that path to give you that spiral. Now, uh, we, we recommend that you do this with all your submodels, but here is where I'm going to throw you a curveball. Let me um, copy this and let's go up. Let's go up to something we have on the windows and doors. Now, per model default on windows and doors from per model default is left to right. It's just going to put it over all the models. But we were talking about submodels. So what if we go ahead and delete it off of there and put it on the other verticals? Other verticals to us are vertical lines that are in your house that aren't part of your house outline. So um, 
uh, well, I don't want to say aren't part of the house outline, but there, there are other verticals that you can activate other than the corners of your house. And uh, we put this on our window frames. We Sometimes, if you want to get creative, you can put this on the sides of your matrix. Uh, and it just adds a little piece of pizzazz to it. Uh, but that's totally up to you. But this was what we called other verticals. So I'll go ahead and paste the effect in here. And quite quickly, you're going to see, hey, wait a second. One side's going down while the other side is going up. Well, I thought you built submodels, Clyde. I thought you told us before you want them to all be congruent. Well, that's where you're right, but that's where I'm a little different because I always liked the idea that one side could be going up, the other side could be going down, and there was no easy way to ensure that those submodels would work the way that I want if I want them bouncing in, let's say, opposition. And so if, if I come in here and I change this to let's let's do left to right bounce bounce left to right and let's let's uh, make it a little shorter so you can see it travel um, and we we change the bounce cycles to four bounce bounce there is no way that you could physically make this effect work that I could find unless I built the submodels this way now why would I do this why would I why would I go against the grain well because quite frankly folks when I sequence the other verticals, I generally don't use the per model default. That's a special thing for me. What I generally will sequence the other verticals is as per model per preview. So if I change this and I rotate the buffer 90 degrees and I want that bouncing up and down, I can always get the exact look I want just because I have the per model per preview render style available to me. So I'm giving you a huge secret here, but the, I mean the truth is is that I like to make those different bounces that left up and the, the right down and the right down and the left up. I like to do that, uh, not, I, I won't say a whole lot, but enough that it, it, it adds something special to the sequence and many people will never be able to pick out that I've done it, uh, but m some people might, and I wanna share with you that if you notice the difference, that's the reason why. Now, let me go show you how I set that up. I mean, it really isn't that complicated. I'll go ahead and use the, the door out frame, uh, uh, the door frame outline. Uh, we'll go into submodels. We'll go into, uh oh, open up over here. Oh, it's a big box, big box. There we go, okay. So here we go, you have vert vert one and you have vert two. Now, if you remember all the little lessons that we teach you about submodels and, and making things work, uh, one of the things is, is we always say start where you want all of your models to start and generally that's the case. So here, if you hover over top of the pixel on the bottom left, we would generally go from the bottom to the top, that's the way I usually would do it, and I would look at vert one and I'd say one through whatever up to here. So that happens to be submodel 1 through 50. So if I put 1 through 5, it's going to travel from the 1 to the 50, excuse me, not 5. And then we have submodel uh, number 2, vert 2. And I, I could start here at the bottom at 125 and go all the way up to, uh, what is it there, 76. But I actually put the 76 first. So x Lights applies the per model default to the 76 through dash through 125 and basically what x lights is telling the effect to do is start here per model default the default is to go from here and follow all the string in numerical order through to here now it's not following it in location order per preview it's not doing that it's following it in the path that the pixels were told to go into so if you use this you can have that opposition type thing going on and some people will get it other people won't and forgive me that we've never told you this before but it's always been kind of a hidden secret a hidden gem in all of our ppd sequences um so maybe it's something you could consider but be careful you could break some other sequences from other vendors if you rely on them to be the way that they are but if you use our ppd sequences this is just one more little trick in your bag because in order for me to make both of them go up and down, I always have to use the per preview render style. So I, I hope that was helpful for you. I have one other thing that I wanted to share with you. 
um, that I think is it's worth mentioning. Now, now you notice that up here in the top left, I have two different spinners here. I have these are both Boscoy Omega spinners. This is the the Mega spinner that is located on the uh, X-Lights download from Boscoyo. You can download this one. And then this is the one that is located here on our PPD Pro layout. And so long about uh, four years ago, I started getting very particular about how the how everything looked. And I, I we ended up coming up with something called Certified Models. And one of the things that we did was we spent some really, really detailed time setting up, sorting, and fixing the models that were in the pro layout, meaning rebuilding them from the ground up. We didn't change the wiring. We just made them look pretty. So it was important for us to have a good, crisp, clean looking layout. And what we ended up doing was we ended up expanding the size of the model so that we could have better pixel placement. And when we looked at these original models, it wasn't exactly, it, at first it started with, you know, I really just want to twist this so this is straight up and down with the bottom. That's where it started. And then I'm like, man, all of those jaggedy pixels there, I got to fix that. And so what we ended up doing, and by the way, you should never turn your models like this ever. Never, ever, ever do that. Watch my video on turning models. Don't use this handle. So what I want to do is I'll show you the biggest difference between these two models. And if you go over here, this is a custom model. x -Lights makes custom models for, uh, well, we use them uh, in x -Lights, that is. And if you look at the custom model data box, you can see 69 wide. This is the actual size, 69 wide by 94 tall. Now, that means it's scrunched. And whenever you apply effects to it, sometimes like a shock wave may not look like a perfect circle. And this is a perfect circle. This is a 46, 47 inch 46 inch spinner it's a disc and if you apply the effects it could look like it's oblong one way or another it looks like egg shaped and so what we attempted to do was we attempted to square this off and what we did do was we used a much larger plotting diagram so it's a 194 by 194 and we were able to get pretty much a perfect circle a perfect as perfect as we could get but also there happens to be a challenge the larger the square you use to build your custom models there's a downside and the downside is render time now why how do these how does a larger square cause longer render times the the more highly defined your models are in your custom models are in X lights the more highly defined they are so for example this this model here it is uh 240 pixels you can see it in the tool tip right there at the very end it's 240 pixels but in order in order to make it this pretty this very nice see again this model worked over here this worked just fine you probably scrunch it down a little bit and make it a little bit smaller if you wanted but this model has 194 pixels wide by 194 pixels tall. The other one only had 64 by 94. And so it was a much smaller area. If we get the calculator here and we open this up and we multiply this by 194 times 194, which is 194 squared, it's 37,636 squares that are inside here. And what x -Lights has to do every time you put an effect onto that, is it has to render effects on anything, including all the blank pixels. So basically what that means is, is that every time you build a custom model or you use custom models with not so much high pixel density count, but the number of blocks that are within that HD prop, the larger these numbers are, the higher the number of squares that are in that block. Now, is that a downside for us? Some, for some it may be, and for some it may not be. If you're running a Mac right now, you're laughing because render times for you guys, you spit in a bucket and, and, and the sequence renders. But the reality is, is if you're on a Windows machine and you're like me and you care less about going to Mac, then, then it's best to build small models, even though they may not be as pretty, they'll have less blocks in them and there'll be less spaces for X-Lights to have to render. So each of these empty boxes, they need to be rendered 
even though in this instance there's only what 220 240 pixels in this prop 240 pixels versus 37,000 boxes total 37 six that's that it's it's a huge number of extra boxes that X lights has to render so what the developers have done is the developers have gone into tools check sequence and they they actually give you a check sequence now that whenever you check sequence it will check to see if your models uh, it open up over here it'll check to see if your models so in this in this case this is just open uh, it'll check to see if your models are larger than what they should be recommended wise Xlights put this uh, put a basic recommendation of no larger than 200 by 200 or we're going to flag you on the check sequence now whenever you see this it doesn't really matter but here's the here's the challenge if you have a super high density prop and maybe you're using the light show hub uh, custom model builder and you build a model that's over a thousand by a thousand uh, squares in to, because there are uh, there are some uh, some flakes some some snowflakes some some props that are larger larger than the standard spinner or the standard snowflake that require high density and high detail and to get that you you, you can only do that on a large grid X lights maximum goes up to 1000 by 1000 square and if you have a lot of pixels it's great and it looks pretty on the screen however it does increase your render time because you have even more of those little itty bitty itty tiny little blocks so now that you know this I think it's important that you guys take a second and step back and is it important that when you run your check sequence and you see an error this model uh, this uh, this custom model is size uh, 300 by 300 and is larger than X lights recommends expect a slow render time that's a check sequence error that can come up and it's not an error it's a warning your sequences will still render but you can disable that warning on the check sequence by going over to file uh, preferences and you can click on the um, check sequence tab and deselect or select if you want to see it I have it selected here disable custom model size checking that uh, will take it off of and there's a number of these this is a whole video in and of itself on the check sequences and the things that it can bypass if you will so that you don't have to worry about getting an error or seeing what people think are errors uh, in the check sequence well guys I hope this week's video was helpful informative and maybe you learned a little bit of something about X lights you never knew before um, you'll also happen to notice we have these awesome brand new t-shirts these are coming to you really really soon Rob's getting the web website set up uh, we, we've got a couple uh, things that we need to get added in and they will be on the PPD website now you see behind me with two different styles of t-shirts we have the uh, whoop, over this shoulder we have this is our uh, Titans of twinkle uh, that's what it says at the bottom pixel pro displays and then we have pixel me this it's on the other shirt here these are the shirts that are going to be available on the PPD website we know everybody has been waiting for new PPD t-shirts and the front end of the shirt is going to have the PPD logo on your left chest uh, side and also brand new PPD hats everybody has been waiting for these as well this is a this is a black hat with a slight gray front that's the color scheme that we've been going with for a number of years now and everybody seems to like it so uh, coming soon to the PPD store that's gonna be in there and you'll be able to order them guys that's everything for me I hope you uh, enjoyed the video if you did please give us a huge thumbs up if you haven't done yet so hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications and as always if you appreciate the things we do here at pixel pro displays consider joining the PPD sequence club right now there's an awesome sale going on I can't tell you in the video because but if you go to the website pixelprodisplays.com you're going to see it and it's awesome because it's only for a limited time we only have three more days before it's done and gone so go check it out guys thank you for joining us we hope you have a wonderful week and we will see you in the next video thanks for joining us and goodbye for now